Hello, everyone, and welcome to our financial aid information session. We are so glad that you have joined us to learn more about applying for aid at Eastside Prep, and we hope that you'll have some great takeaways uh, for applying for aid at other schools as well, uh, wherever your journey is going to bring you. But we are really happy to speak specifically to our process, uh, the things you'll need to know about applying for aid, and we hope that through not only the content that we're presenting, but also the questions that we'll answer that'll come from you, our audience, that we will have an opportunity to just really clarify everything that you're gonna need to know in the process. Uh, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, uh, we'll, we'll give you an introduction to what our format's gonna be this evening, as well as who you're going to be hearing from, including myself. Um, so I am our Director of Enrollment Management here at Eastside Prep. And I am delighted to be in my third year at EPS, helping with the admissions and re-enrollment process, as well as financial aid for all of our families. And I am joined by my dear colleague, Mr. Casey Atley. Casey, how are you this evening? Ah, Cheryl, so wonderful to see you. I am lovely, thank you. And lovely, uh, lovely. Lo wish, you, wish you were skiing right now? Um, I Yes, I'm dreaming of it. <laughs> well, it's a nice cold day here in Western Washington as we are recording this, but uh, but no no skiing uh, on on the streets of Western Washington. You'd have to go a little bit further afield <laughs> for that. That is um, true. So, Casey, uh, Casey, this is year four or five for you at EPS. This is year four, believe it or not. Year four, and you have been doing our financial aid evaluation since arriving as our yep. um, initially our chief financial officer, now our director of finance and operations. And so uh, Casey has a wealth of knowledge that he's going to share with us. Uh, we're going to go through a whole variety of different pieces of what you'll need to know. Um, and we're going to just trade it back and forth as we go through um, the presentation this evening. So what we are going to start with is first information about financial aid. As I mentioned, we're going to talk about kind of how we approach aid at EPS and when Families receive aid, what does that cover? We know that we have expenses beyond tuition, so we're gonna talk about what are those expenses that you can anticipate? How is aid gonna cover them? Um, we wanna talk about really who should be thinking about applying for aid. A lot of families will ask us, you know, is there a certain cutoff that you have um, that I should know about when I'm applying for aid? And we wanna give you a sense of what's realistic to expect um, as far as, you know, who should be thinking about this process? Um, and then again, getting into the process, um, getting into the nuts and bolts of how are you actually going to do this? If you have started a financial aid application online, we're going to have some specifics for you about how to continue that. Um, and if you haven't gotten started yet, we'll help you with where you need to know, where you need, need to go in order to get started. Um, and then we want to reserve the rest of the time this evening for the things that you are wondering about. So you should see in this Teams Live event that you have a, a Q&A option um, and you can use questions uh, or you can use that to ask questions throughout the presentation. Please know that you have the option to either share your name with us or ask questions anonymously. So um, it will usually pre-populate a name in there. Go ahead and just take that out if you want to ask questions anonymously and we'll publish questions but we won't announce who um, has has asked that question if you put your name in there because we are recording this presentation um, but just know that we appreciate any and all questions that you send there if you want a question to be answered privately you can also send it privately and just ask us to answer it by text we can actually write some answers in there for you if you are attending this event live um, so we will take as much time as we need up until 7.30. Um, and then I think after 7.30, Casey's probably got to get to sleep so he can get up early to go skiing or something along those lines. Yep, yep, <laughs> he's giving me a thumbs up. So that's the truth. Uh, so we are going to go ahead and get started now with the information component of the presentation. So first of all, um, you know, when we look at aid at EPS, we are really rooted in our mission as we are in so many aspects of what we do as a school at Eastside Prep. Um, our mission is to think critically, act responsibly, lead compassionately, and innovate wisely. And so the two principles that we really look at when we're thinking about our financial aid practices, um, how we're awarding aid, um, wanting to have that distributed as, as widely and equitably as possible, um, we're really engaging that responsible action and that compassionate leadership. And really our, our fundamental goal is to just reduce the barriers that any family is going to have to being able to attend Eastside Prep. We want as many students to be able to access this, this education as we have enrollment spaces for, um, and we don't want the financial cost to be that barrier between a family who would really want to attend Eastside Prep um, and the family who can afford to attend Eastside Prep. 
So uh, we have been committing to providing more and more aid on a regular basis. And Casey, actually, if you want to provide some updated numbers for us in terms of we've we've currently been distributing over one and a half million. What is that number going to be for this upcoming year? That will bump up to about 1.6 million. 1.6 million. And that number um, is going to equal um, what percent of our tuition revenue annually? Uh, eight and a quarter percent. Eight and a quarter percent. And so we're we're on our way to meeting our goal of um, 10 percent of tuition revenue annually. Um, we want to be distributing aid to more and more students right now. It's one in 10 of our students who's receiving aid. Um, and that average award you can see there of 30,000 per student, um, that's significant because we really want to make sure that students have those resources that they need. Uh, so again, an increasing commitment to aid, more and more aid that students are receiving every year, but we're incrementally waking, making our way up. In year 18 as a school, uh, we're still a team but we are we're growing um, and we continue to um, double down on that commitment uh, to be able to distribute more and more aid to our families. And so let's talk about what that covers. Uh, tuition, of course, is the thing that a lot of folks know about. Tuition is really what is going to cover the total academic experience, um, the cost of attending classes. That's basically what you need to know for tuition, but it also covers any of the activities that students are doing. So whether you're part of robotics or the Dungeons and Dragons Club, uh, whether you're part of a sports team or participating in the play, those are all things that tuition is going to be helping with um, because tuition is largely funding um, the efforts of our really talented faculty and staff who help to deliver our program at Eastside Prep, as well as the facilities that we are very soon to return to um, to be able to engage in that full time. But um, we are, you know, we're really looking at the people who make the difference in your kids' lives, and that is really just about the faculty for, first and foremost, as well as the staff um, who are part of the campus community. Also financially covers the main conduit that we're using right now for being able to connect as a community, and that is the laptop. So our laptop, we're on a common laptop program, and so every member of our students, faculty, and staff is uh, given access to the same laptop model. That is something that you purchase from Eastside Prep. So when you're receiving aid, you have money to help with the purchase of that laptop. And uh, that purchase happens every four years. That's the warranty life for that laptop. And trust us, from broken screens to to uh, missing keys, to all sorts of different programmatic, uh, you know, software pieces. And we help with fixing anything and everything on those laptops. So almost every student and probably adult in the Eastside Prep community is bound to use that warranty at some point. Um, so you really get a lot of mileage for that. And the laptop right now is the main way that we're connecting as a community. So it's a really important tool as are our books and other course materials. Right now we've been, while in remote, sending out uh, boxes of everything from lab supplies for science classes to sports supplies for PE classes. Um, those things as well as the books that you will encounter for literature classes and science classes and everything in between. Those are pieces um, that are also covered by aid. And then of course, if you're receiving bus transportation uh, or if you're taking advantage of our private bus transportation or if you're going to be taking advantage of public transportation um, either way we're going to help with the cost of the private bus transportation that eps provides or um, with the cost of an orca card so that you'll be able to use public transit so finally who should be applying for aid really any family who is who is thinking you know we're not sure if we're going to be able to afford the tuition and other expenses out of pocket for EPS. That's a family who should be applying for aid. We see a wide range of incomes uh, with families that are applying for aid. So there's no minimum income or maximum income consideration for um, who should be applying for aid. If they have that level of concern about, you know, we're just not sure if we're going to be able to make regular payments to Eastside Prep for tuition and other expenses, go ahead and apply for aid. And really, anybody who is already enrolled at EPS and then is going to say, you know, there's something that changed in our financial situation. We lost a job or some hours at that job or um, we are going through a divorce and that's changing our financial situation. There are so many reasons why families come to us after the point of enrollment, even if they haven't received aid initially or if they're going to be needing to um, increase or decrease the amount of aid that they're receiving. Those are all really important reasons why families will contact us about um, their aid application or their aid amount. So um, Casey's going to go ahead and talk us through the process of what we're going to do, some dates that you need to know. Um, we've got one coming right up and one that has already passed, um, as well as just kind of what the overall picture is for how this fits in with the enrollment um, as well. 
Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, so as you all know, the deadline for admissions was a week ago yesterday. Um, so hopefully you got that in on time. Um, and then the uh, financial aid application deadline is coming up February 4th, so about two weeks out. Um, the application is, I'll probably say, a little bit later. Also, it can take up to a couple hours. Um, so get in there, take a look at it, and uh, give yourself a little bit of time. Um, then uh, re-enrollment for our existing students and families occurs January, February, also right now. Um, so we just uh, uh, issued those re-enrollment contracts to families um, a couple weeks back, and they are going to fill our seats um uh, again here and then the, the process for financial aid just uh for families that are coming back so uh, we start to look at those as soon as the applications come in um to be honest with you you'll find out a little later we don't necessarily do that um uh, for everybody for the new families mm -hmm. um but for our uh, returning families we look at those as soon as they come in so we can get a little bit ahead of the game and make sure that we are supporting our existing families great Okay, and then Casey, will you talk us through a little bit about um, kind of this process of, you mentioned that we'll review those applications right away for families that have already enrolled, but how does it work in terms of the order of when we're reviewing things and you know notifications, things like that? Yeah, so this is a, a, a super important point for me and Cheryl and, and the school, um, and Cheryl and I talk about it regularly, but we, we um, use the term need blind, um, and here's how it kind of plays out. So you've gone through and submitted your application, um, you'll go through and submit an aid application. Then Cheryl will lead the admissions team through looking at the app, uh, the applicants and will determine which, um, which students uh, will be offered uh, enrollment at our school. Only at that time does Cheryl come to me, me being the one who kind of starts with the numbers um, behind the scene and say, hey, Casey, please take a look at these, these folks for financial aid and let us know uh, uh, what we can do. Uh, so because of that, I don't even look at um, new families um, new uh, applicant families, students, until Cheryl tells me to. So from that standpoint, we'd like to say that we are need blind in the in the sense that the aid is not um, not uh, coming into uh, being taken into account at all with Cheryl and her admissions team. Any build on that, Cheryl? Yeah, I think it's just it's really important for folks to know that those things are truly separate. So no member of our admissions uh, committee, anyone who's interacting with the applications on the faculty level or other administrators at the school is going to be aware of your financial aid status, um, that you'll be applying for aid or that you're receiving aid. And we continue that throughout the experience at Eastside Prep. So we really want to um, keep your confidential information confidential and not have you wondering who's going to be aware of your financial situation of you know of any kind we really keep that at, to a very very limited range of folks that are part of our business office myself as director of enrollment management and our head of school so you can have that trust in knowing that uh, we're we're keeping the information that you hold very dear um, that is very personal um, as confidential as possible thank you uh, so that <laughs> sorry about that so, so we're going to talk about how, how you can start applying. And um, one of the things you can do is head right to our website. Um, when you're on the website, you're going to see the section that says financial aid that's under the admissions menu. Um, and that is where you're going to get going. So that application there, um, you're going to get to solutionsbyss.com. Um, that is the host site for that financial aid application. Um, but you can access that through the links that we provide on our website. And then um, when you're thinking about, you know, what is this SSS school and student services? Um, this is something that was originally created by the National Association of Independent Schools so that it could be an application used for lots of different independent schools. And um, it's something that you can use for any number of kids that you have applying to uh, independent schools, not just EPS, but many others. Some schools use other applications, um, but this is the one that many of us use. An important thing to know is that um, if parents are living in separate households, that each parent has to create their own account. So if you have a separate financial picture from somebody else that's helping with your child's um, educational costs, then they should be creating their own account and filling out their own application in SSS. All right, so this Family Resource Center, um, this is where you're going to be able to find a ton of information about actually completing the application. You can see there's a button there that says login to complete. 
um, or update your parent financial statement, PFS. That is the acronym that you'll hear um, for the parent financial statement. That's basically where you give all your information. You can almost think of it as like um, when you're completing your taxes and you have your 1040 that you're working on. A PFS is kind of like that level of uh, detailed information that you're going to be putting in, and that's something that's ultimately going to be received by us. Um, but this is a great place to get lots of help on filling that out. You might have specific questions about the questions that are asked in there, um, and there's just lots of resources and support that you can access. So once you get there, you're going to see um, this login page and they're going to ask you, do you have an account already or are you just getting started with this? And so you'll see a variety of options there, but that's what this page will look like. So Casey, will you talk us through um, just kind of once they get into that parent financial statement, I see a lot of different information here in terms of uh, the different sections and what's contained there. So how am I going to know if I'm completing the parent financial statement, what I have done, what I haven't done? um kind of where where to go on that page yeah you bet so the nice thing about this uh this application the system that we and a lot of other schools use is that um it is pretty easy to navigate around I mean, as you can see on the left here the picture we have there these are um, a number of the different categories that uh, you will be filling out um, as you might be able to guess by looking over here the ones uh, this is an application that i went through um, myself so you can see where there's a green check that means i already finished off that section um, down below there, you will see that I have um, some business information that I have not completed. Um, so this uh, this uh, picture, this banner on the left is on every page as you're going through the uh, parent financial statement. So you'll be able to uh, tell what you have done and what you have not done. And it, it you can jump around. You don't have to go sequential. Um, you'll want to start and get the first four or five done first. But after that, you can jump around, um, just as Cheryl said, as if you were doing your tax return. And, Hey, I've got something that's uh, right here in front of me. I can fill that out, drop myself a note, and I'll go find the next item that I need to complete the rest of it. Um, so that that's helpful in navigating around. Awesome. So yeah, it sounds like we've got a really clear system with green check marks, and it reminds me of the application system Ravenna. So if you have been aware going through the application process of how to look for those green check marks in Ravenna to ensure that you have those application uh, components done, you will look for that similar green check mark in the um, SSS system. So I like that consistency there <laughs> between um, between the different forms. So. Casey has put together some tips and tricks for us in terms of some things to know as you're going through some of these sections. And Casey, this is for you based on having filled out the PFS yourself and being aware of, you know, like this is a little tricky what I'm putting in here and what am I putting in there? Um, so Casey, will you walk us through some of your suggestions of how to navigate that? Yeah, so um, as, as Cheryl said, this comes from me having looked at applications for uh, a number of years now and each year going through it myself to remind me um, of what it looked like um, and I think the uh, and I'm going to sound redundant on this a number of times because I'll keep saying it over and over in different uh, different slides here is uh, enter information in just one one section of the application um, that sounds simple but there's things that will be asked in slightly different ways and you'll think about hey should I go there or should I go here um, put it in once if it's in the wrong place that's okay we'll figure that out down the road um, so a couple examples here uh, mortgage debt um, there's a section when you go through here um, on real estate so mortgage debt goes in there there's also another section that talks about other assets and debts so you don't want to du uh, duplicate your uh, mortgage um, in those two places um, the other part that gets a little tricky um, is the income especially if you own your own business so when you get into the uh, pfs it's going to ask you for um, it's going to ask you for income um, off your tax return it's asking for w-2 income um, there's another section down uh, called other taxable income where you will uh, enter information about the business or businesses um, that you do own uh, where we'll end up with uh, an income and net income coming out of there that is used in the calculations performed um, in the PFS. Uh, well, it, the uh, as I say, the, the next part here is um, one of the things that you'll be asked to do is kind of put together a, a monthly income statement. Um, hmm. So kind of thinking about is your is your uh, your family budget, your home budget, you know, what do I I spend my money each month um, and I'll ask you to go through and, and um, fill out different things um, housing um, auto school um, insurance you know, in other areas like that uh, so uh, it asks um, some of it asks for it in a monthly some of it asks for it in an annual number so read it closely 
if it asks for it in a monthly and it's something you pay annually, just do some math there to divide by 12. So um, rental insurance or homeowner's insurance, that might be something that you only pay once a year. Um, divide by 12 and put it in there when it's asking for it, uh, asking for it monthly. Okay, great. So it sounds like we're almost creating like a mini budget in, in yeah. uh, the PFS to represent kind of what's happening in the total household income. That is absolutely right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so how are we going to know if we're applying to Eastside Prep, if we're sending this to other schools? Like what's, what's the process of actually making sure that this info goes to Eastside Prep? The nice thing is you can do it all at once. Um, so you can see here, this this is um, step five. So this is after I've gone through and we've put in our name and address type of thing. We come to step five in the uh, in the PFS here and it, uh, you select the schools. And once again, this is used by multiple schools, so you can select as many schools as you would like in here. Um, so you see in the uh, upper left corner there of this, there's an enter an SSS code. As you can see on the bottom, our code is 3665. You don't have to memorize that. It is on our <laughs> website also. Um, you can also do a simple search on here, put in Eastside Prep. Um, you might get one that pops up in Eastside Prep down in the in the Bay Area. So just make sure you grab the one there in, in the great state of Washington. Awesome. Um, but you can go through and pick out as many, uh, many schools as you want here, list them out, and then you're completing one application um, for all of those schools. Uh, you can go back and add schools. You can go back and take schools out at any time. So don't feel like that this has to be a, a master list. Uh, nice thing about this, um, entire uh, entire program, you can come back and make changes um, along the way. Great. All right. So, what is pre-screening going to look like, Casey? And why do I have to do it? Like, what what's what's the pre-screening piece all about? So, this is the area that you probably want to pay um, real close attention to to make uh, your job easier in completing the uh, the application. It'll go through and ask really some tax information, um, you know, size of household, amount of household income things like that from there, it'll uh, it'll determine what other um, information that you may need to provide down the road. Um, so one example, if, if I don't own a business, then I'm gonna say I don't own a business and that's gonna take away five, six questions that I do not need to. Um, now, if you own a business, um, you're gonna need to do that because you're gonna be able to uh, provide that information. So this is a, it just as it says, it's a pre-screening, it's gonna help determine the questions that are asked um, uh, further along the line in this application. Mm, okay, so it's almost like when you go to the doctor and they only give you the forms that you need based on the stuff that you're going to have to get done at the doctor at that time. Like they're, we're kind of stacking the deck for the things that you're going to need to fill out later. Yep. Okay, cool. So once we've gone through that pre-screening, um, talk to us about kind of this additional expenses section so that we can know how is this information going to go in here and, and be utilized? Yep. So. I'll start by saying I told you I was going to be redundant. <laughs> so you can <laughs> okay. see my one reminder here already is enter expenses only in one section. So um, do your best to go through and, and, and take a read at it. There's the um, little blue things you can see there. If you hover over it, it's going to give you a little bit of a, a little bit of idea um, of what what they're looking for. Um, go through there once again. Do, do your best. Think about it truly like your family budget. It's like, all right, it's got to fit in here somewhere, but I only want to put it in once. Uh, Great. That that type of thing. The um, the bottom there talks about things that uh, things that you should include, as well as things that you um, should not include um, in in this application. So, once again, some of it is not duplicating things. Um, yeah. Okay. Great. So we'll have a pretty clear sense and those little blue dots actually have an eye in them, which will be easier to see when you're in the system or when you have already been to the system, you probably noticed those. Yep. Um, if we own real estate, so some folks own real estate, whether or not they live in the, the home that they own, that's something that they might rent out, or maybe they do live in the ho house that they own. Like, what are some things that we need to know about the real estate check section, Casey? Yeah, so once again, this will be one of the areas that if you check yes, you're going to get a number of questions. If you check no, then you're going to jump right through it. Um, so you, you're going to need to know in, um, some basic information about your home, you know, when you bought it, what it cost. Um, you know what? Uh, how much you still owe? What's the value on it? Um, nowadays, that's pretty easy to look up online. Um, so you're going to need to know that. Uh, once again, um, mortgage um, is a big part of that, and a lot of our mortgages um, for uh, a lot of folks, property taxes and/or insurance are part of that um, that mortgage payment. So once again, my monthly payment. If that is the case, 
don't separate um, separate out uh, separate out the property tax mm -hmm. um, and with the insurance. Um, so that's important once again, just to uh, make sure you're not um, double counting or not including um, everything that you want to include there. Great, great. So I would just use line 10 H if I have a, a payment that includes um, like so only 10 H and 10 I are used if I have separate property tax payment and a separate homeowners insurance um, versus having that all in one uh, payment that goes to like an escrow account on a monthly basis. Exactly. Great. You, you could teach this session. You know what, Casey? It's so much more fun with you, though. I got to say. <laughs> All right, so we're almost rounding the bend here. What's our final step going to be when we're completing our PFS? So once you've gone through and entered all this information, you've got all your green checks there, you feel good about what you've uh, what you've put in, um, you're going to go in and you're going to hit submit. When you hit submit, it's going to ask you to pay um, the application fee. Once you do that, then you're going to be able to upload the, uh, the documents that are needed. And um, so the main ones we have listed here, so tax returns, the most uh, two most recent, um, maybe you'll be able to get to 2020. Uh, most folks, by the time they apply, um, do not have 2020, so 2019 and 2018. Um, and then what we do, since we don't have the most recent tax return, is we ask for the 2020 W-2, which we should all have by the end of the month. Um, and then if, if that's not there, then the most recent pay stub you can find. What we're trying to do there is we're just trying to um, say we, and this is the um, SS takes that information and validates the uh, the information you're putting in in terms of uh, in terms of income. So uh, that is the reason for having those different documents. And okay. I'll say it, I'll say it once again here, but you can make changes along the way. Um, mm -hmm. So don't feel don't feel like uh oh I'm stuck. I can only do this once. You can come back um, and add add things along uh, along the way. And if you haven't provided all the documents, someone will be there to remind you. <laughs> and that would be Mr. Casey Otley. Um, so Casey, we did get a question in the chat, which was I don't have my 2020 taxes done yet, um, but it seems required in PFS as, addic as additional docs to upload. Like it looks like it's required at that yep. um, at that upload point. So what should they do? Um, just uh, you can just skip over that and add in your 19 and your 18 and then add these okay. other couple of uh, other couple documents. Yes, uh, it Great. is a required document. Um, not only will I remind you, SSS will remind you at some point also. Um, obviously, you, you, you're going to complete your um, 2020 tax return when you can. Um, and then when it is done, then you can upload it. And that, being real frank, that usually happens after all decisions are made anyways. It's a way exactly. to come back and have the system validate um, validate all information to help us both this year and in future years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're recording this on the 22nd of January. So if you already have your 2020 taxes done, you are superhero level status. I definitely yep. do not have mine done. Casey, I'm positive you don't have yours done. Uh, so, yep, we we do not expect that you have that 2020 in, even though it'll look like it's required. Just make sure we've got two years of tax returns uploaded and that's great, correct? That is it. So let's talk about, you know, you're going to be going through this process. You will have been working a long day. It's going to be late at night. The kids are asleep. You've got something going on in the TV. Uh, you know, you're maybe not paying totally close attention to everything we're saying right now. You're going to have questions. Um, so the place you're going to want to go as a resource for those questions um, is just going to be right in that Help Center tab that you're going to see in the PFS. So when you're in there filling things out, that's where you can go. You're going to be able to search in and type questions that you have. You can also search by category there. Um, and they try to make that as intuitive as possible in terms of, you know, the, the way your brain might be thinking about some of the questions that you have. But go ahead and just use that search box because it's really going to be the easiest way for you to access the things you're interested in. You can type in a question number and letter too, and it'll give you specific resources on that. So don't feel afraid to use that help center. It's actually a great tool as you're completing the PFS. Um, and so if you have questions as you're going through the application process, if it's around the technology, so let's say you um, 
are having problems logging into your PFS, you are not sure how to do that, the interface is wonky, it's not working with the browser that you have, or just any other technical needs, um, go ahead and contact SSS. They're the ones who are gonna be able to troubleshoot that because it is their software tool that we're using here, but it's not something that we're experts in um, the ins and outs of technically. So if it's a tech related question, go ahead and contact SSS. They're gonna be your best resource and you'll see a contact us um, area on the PFS section as well and even before you log in. Uh, if you have questions about the numbers, as we've highlighted tonight, Casey's our numbers guy, uh, you're gonna wanna reach out to Casey and um, really if it's anything around the needed documentation, like you had that question of, you know, uh, I, I don't have 2020 done yet, what should I do? Casey's gonna be your great person um, for that. So, uh, and then if it's a process related question, if it's something having to do with the admissions process, re-enrollment, um, new enrollment, those are the things that I'm gonna be able to help with. So just go ahead and email me and I'll be happy to help with the questions and needs that you have there. Um, and speaking of questions, we do have another question in the chat, um, which is if the 2020 tax return, because you are a superhero is already uploaded, um, do you still need a pay stub? So what would you say, Casey? You do not need to provide a pay stub. Uh, the uh, the exception to that would be is if circumstances have changed. So if in, income has changed quite a bit, uh, where we're sitting right now in January 2021, uh, 2021 um, relative to what is represented on your uh, 2020 uh, income statement, then it would be worthwhile doing. Um, that could be if your income has increased, as Cheryl was talking about, um, new job, um, or unfortunately in some of these times right now, <clears throat> some people are without jobs. Um, so. Uh, helping uh, provide a little color behind that. Within the application, you will provide um, an estimated income for 2021, um, as well as the income for 2000, uh, 2020. So if those are, if, 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 uh, if needed uh, to tell the story, uh, provide the pay stub. Okay, great, great. Well, wonderful. So this brings us to the end of our presentation. Casey, we finished a full 10 minutes ahead of schedule, which means we can get to more questions earlier. Um, so we will be available. Go ahead and add questions in the chat as you have them. We are more than happy to help with those. Um, hopefully what we've helped provide you with already in terms of an overview is going to get you a long way to getting your application either started or uh, in process or completed if you haven't already done that. And again, you've got a couple of weeks now before um, the deadline that we're going to have for our newly enrolling families um, for the financial aid deadline. So, um, so Casey, one question that I would have for you would be, uh, yeah, we, we're, going, we're an already enrolled family and we're going through some of those life changes and circumstances. Like, who's the best person I should contact if things come up in that realm? Um, either you or me. <laughs> How about that? Um, if it's really coming down to numbers and, and um, you know, what you want to put in the application and, and stuff like that, certainly come to me. Reach out to me. Um, uh, send me an email. I'd say call me, but I'm not always at school right now. Um, but we can figure out a time to uh, figure, uh, figure out a time to chat so we can work through um, how to how to fill that out. Mm, great. Um, Casey, we have a request about basically trying to get a sense of what percent of uh, like what percentage of applicants will get some aid, um, as well as if we have any distribution statistics on the amount of financial aid. And since we haven't presented uh, or we haven't prepared slides around that, I'm wondering if you can help with just a general overview of sort of who is receiving aid, what maybe like what's an income picture for, uh, you know, like if, if we have a median income for our families receiving aid. Um, an important thing to know is from a percentage of um, student standpoint, we, it is 10% of our total students that are receiving aid. Um, so yeah, anything that you want to provide us with in terms of more information about kind of who's receiving aid and in what amount at East Side yeah. yeah, I think Cheryl, it's important. You know, you mentioned that about one in 10 of our students do that. And it's the 10% is not a magic number. That's just where it happens to be right now. We don't target that per se. Um, and our average right now is about $30,000 um, that we provide in aid to um, that one in 10 student um, as of right now. Um, in terms of income, that's, that it can be all over the board, given family circumstances, size of family, other things going on, uh, medical um, challenges, things like that. So it really can be all over the board um, of those who are, um, those who apply for aid and those who receive aid. Um, yeah. Great. 
Great. So really the important thing is to know that we have a number of students who are receiving aid. Um, that aid, you know, in terms of we do have some students that are receiving partial grants and we also have some students that are receiving full grants. So let's say I have a 50% uh, of tuition cost grant to Eastside Prep. That 50% grant, we're going to apply that same amount across the board to all of the other expenses. So that means I'll receive 50% of the cost of the laptop computer, 50% of the cost of the books that I'm going to buy for Eastside Prep in a given year, 50% um, of the transportation costs. So um, basically, whatever percent of tuition need we are meeting, we're also meeting that across the board for the different expenses that you would have. So if I'm a student who's receiving a 100% grant um, because my family cannot pay any money out of pocket towards the education in a given year, which is the case for a number of our families, um, then 100% of that need will be met across the board. Um, one thing that we didn't include that we're talking about um, here is also the cost of, of school lunch. So lunch is something that we provide a stipend for um, right now during our remote time. But when we're on campus, there is money that goes into a student account that can be deducted for purposes of using on campus for school lunch and that's the equivalent um, if you're receiving 100 percent of need met that's the equivalent of a school lunch every day that the student is going to be attending school on campus and again right now um, we're providing that in grocery gift cards um, to families that have asked us for that support um, some families have said you know what we're fine when we're at home we're, we're we're handling it and other families have said yes that support does matter to us and some families have changed that um, decision along the way but that is help that we're providing as well um, the cost of lunch uh, during the school day so um, Casey, another question that I would have for you would be if I am, um, you know, sort of like, I think I'm done with the process. I've, I've filled out the form, I've paid, um, but I don't think that I can pay the application fee. What should I do? Um, you can uh, reach out to me on that. I'll actually reach out to Cheryl or myself on that one. We can both, uh, we can both help with that for those families that that's an impediment to completing the application. Um, we have the ability to help with that. There's also, as you go through the process and you hit submit, it is possible that um, SSS will just tell you that you do not need to um, uh, do not need to make a payment. Great. So um, let's talk about student or families that have students enrolled at multiple schools. Um, mm -hmm. This person's asking, I'm not sure how much I will pay in tuition for my second son because we're also just applying for kindergarten at other schools. Um, so how much should I estimate? So um, what would be the process for a family that doesn't already have that student enrolled there, but is likely going to have that student enrolled in kindergarten at another school? How do we do that? Yeah, so as you go through the application, you're going to be asked certainly about the uh, makeup of the family. Um, part of what is asked about is how many um, uh, where the students go to school. Um, multiple kids um, and what it ends up coming out is you know tuition paying schools and that could be uh, anywhere K through 12 it can also be in college um, so we'll ask that with that you um, it'll um, ask you and you make your best estimate of um, how much the cost of that education is and how much you can pay on your own uh, versus how much you are already receiving on aid from the school or some other um, some other party um, and then the, the the gap there is what you would be asking um, for aid um, so th there may be some estimates that are going on um, early on. Great, great. So it sounds like just share that information and we'll we'll plan on it's like you're going to be having that as an expense. And if for some reason that changed, not a big deal to get that updated. Yep. Cool. All right. Um, so another question that we commonly get from families is around, um, you know, sort of like payments to Eastside Prep. How often am I going to have to be paying Eastside Prep for tuition? Um, what is that going to look like? Do I have to pay all at once or can I pay over time like a monthly bill? Um, what should I expect in terms of paying Eastside Prep for the tuition that I do owe? Yeah, yeah we, have, we have three different uh, payment options. Um, one of them is, as you mentioned, is um, paying once. Um, all of them, I, I will say, start June 1st. So um, the first one is paying once, which would be June 1st. There's another opportunity to pay three times. Uh, so that, um, and then the third one is to pay eight times, which mm -hmm. the eighth time would be January 1. Um, so the last payment in both the three payment uh, plan and the eight payment plan is January 1. So three different options there that you get to mm -hmm. choose from. 
Yep. And our idea behind that is that we want families to be paying their final tuition payment for the current school year before they're going to be asked to put down a deposit uh, for the upcoming school year, which is what we request in early January um, that you would need to pay before the beginning of February for that re-enrollment. So we basically want you to be done with the current school year before we're asking for any money for the upcoming school year. We do understand that sometimes things come up for families where they'll have to arrange a special payment plan. Um, so we do make some exceptions to that if families notify us that something big has happened um, or they need to rearrange some funds or something like that. So we we definitely will work with families on that. But the idea and the principle behind those overall payment plan structures is that you're going to be done with this year before you move on to next year. Um, and again, January of this this year, we um, have a re-enrollment period that will end on February 5th. So so basically that's um, the, the period of time that you you will have to make that decision about re-enrollment. And just for the record, about 97 to 98 percent of our families re-enroll every year. They're very happy <laughs> at Eastside Prep. Um, so even though we do ask for this annual process of a commitment um, that has a different contract, um, it is something that we fully expect that you're coming back. And between middle school and upper school, sometimes we get the question of, well, we have to reapply between the middle school and the high school program. No, uh, once you are admitted to Eastside Prep, um, in the middle school years, you're continuing on through the upper school and there's no need to reapply for admission um, each year. Casey, anything else that you've been thinking about as we've been going through this? Um, questions that you think or, you know, questions that you've gotten recently from some of our returning families that might help some of our new families? You just asked or you just said something there that helps uh, brought to mind one of the things. One of the questions that we regularly get is if I get 50% aid this year, do I get 50% aid? next year and so forth and so on. Um, the answer is not exactly um, because circumstances can change in terms of um, income um, and other family income and expenses for families to change. Uh, but I think it, what, what we will say is that if circumstances remain the same, um, then you can expect to get somewhere in the same neighborhood um, of 50% using this example. Um, I think most families thinking back through my, my years of, of doing this now, um, without a significant change in income or expenses, um, it has not moved more than a few percent each year. Great, great. Yeah, so basically, if, if nothing significant, significant changes in your financial picture, then nothing is significantly going to change in terms of the aid picture. And do know that we do scale up aid as tuition increases. Typically, we're seeing a tuition increase of um, roughly 3%, 4% yep. on an annual basis. And so the tuition um, aid grants are going to scale up with those tuition increases. So you don't have to worry about, you know, well, when we started in fifth grade, <laughs> we received a $20,000 grant, but that's not going as far in, uh, you know, 12th grade. We, we will adjust those accordingly based on the tuition on an annual basis. Cool. Um, all right, Casey, anything else that you can think of that you are um, hoping to impart to our families tonight or that you would think would be helpful to folks before we close up if we don't have other questions we're happy to stick around uh, but i want to make sure that we we've, we've gotten all the questions asked um, that are going to um, be needed tonight of course you can still see on this slide here uh, our contact information our email addresses if there are things that you want to reach out specifically especially if you have those numbers questions to casey or if you've got some overall kind of big picture enrollment questions for me but anything else that you would say casey tonight no, just I, I guess what I would say is just reiterate where you started is we don't want um, the the cost of the tuition at uh, Eastside Prep to be an impediment to applying um, to come to Eastside Prep. Absolutely, and that we really we overall look at this process as a partnership with families whether you're talking about uh, the admissions process, whether we're talking about the uh, ongoing partnership that you'll have with the school, if your child enrolls and you're in touch with their advisors and teachers and you know other members of the staff and community at EPS, you know this is really about us working together. And so we always wanna know um, how we can best assist families with the needs that they have. And certainly um, those financial needs at a tuition paying institution are gonna be cheap among uh, what some families are really looking for in order to feel that sense of, okay, I can trust um, that EPS has my back, that I'm gonna do my part and I'm gonna do something significant 
um, uh, you know, on, on the part of our household or our family, but that uh, but EPS is going to help me to get the rest of the way and help our family to get the rest of the way um, to making it possible for our child to attend. So um, so that commitment that really goes all the way through the whole experience. And we just want you to know that um, if you're getting started in the process this year, we just see that as part of the, a long journey of uh, communication and commitment that we're going to have to one another. So, um, so Casey, I want to thank you for uh, sharing your expertise tonight and walking us through the various steps and uh, and having filled out the PFS yourself so that you are empathetic to the experience that our families are going through. Casey, by the way, how long did it take you um, to complete that entire parent financial statement when you did that? That may not be exactly fair since I knew some of the questions that were going to be asked. So it took me less than an hour. Um, but once again, I knew some of the questions that were going to be asked. Yeah, so you had a running start, but Typically, what we hear from families is between an hour and a couple hours, just depending on how much sort of digging around and sourcing that they need to do. If you're somebody who keeps your finances pretty, uh, you know, organized and, and keeps a lot of things in, you know, folders where you know how to access them and whatnot, it probably won't take you much more than an hour. If you're somebody who keeps one thing over here and one thing over there and one thing over there, it might be a little bit more complicated in terms of um, the, the uh, different questions that you need to get answers to in order to fill out the form. But um, we're grateful that you joined us to be able to learn more about this. This content is gonna be available on the website. We have our existing presentation that we did a couple months ago that is up there if you want to access that content right away. Um, but if you want tonight's recording, we'll get that up um, early next week. Uh, since we are heading into the weekend now, we'll have it up on Monday. And uh, so we'll you'll be able to refer back to this if there are questions you have and want to, you know, even skip through to the parts of the presentation that you remembered were key to you. Um, or again, just go ahead and shoot us an email and let us know the questions that you have. But Casey, thank you again. Um, I want to give thanks to Katie Nickel, the woman behind the curtain, our admissions uh, experience coordinator, uh, who has been able to uh, produce this event tonight. We are grateful to Katie for this and all of the many events she produces on behalf of East Side Prep. We wish you all the best with completing your parent financial statement and your application to East Side Prep um, for admission. Let us know what you need. We are happy to help and we will look forward to being in touch to help with all of those questions. So thanks everyone.